with one more episode of BS Kitchen Show, my show. Put some, put some claps there, Mark, for us. <laughs> yes, I'm, this is my special guest. I brought him because loads of my friends is asking about him and said, I should have him in the show. As you guys know, I, know, I like to invite people that I've been on the restaurant, so trying that food, but this one was so many friends texting me saying, you need to have them in the show, you need to have them in the show, and they were my lunch party, so I said, come to my party, baby, <laughs> come to my kitchen, and I'm going to introduce you, because the name is long, so you know, you know me with my broken English, so I have to have a, <laughs> something to look for, and read the name, you better read with my glass, because Please. I did a TV <laughs> Before was not very good. So I introduce you, Raj from Scratch Cook Social. Yay, Raj! Thank you very much, Raj. Thank, Thank you very you. much for coming. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for having patience with me with my try to say the the name of your business. Um, it's been an experience. Why, yeah, you need to tell me all everything, everybody that wants yeah. to know about you. Heard so much about you before I met you. You can put that one there. So just okay, leave the it? name for me to check. Always the name. Remind you. <laughs> yeah, I did say some bad word before. Isn't it? Oh my gosh, I you can't say that. that I'm not going to ask you to scratch anything, okay? Okay, thank you. <laughs> right, so tell me all about you tell everybody to know about you yeah. what Raj do what um what your skills what your passion what you're doing you know it's scratching cooking oh well i'm not <laughs> scratch cooking so uh first of all thank you Bia, for inviting me along to this wonderful show uh it's super exciting and uh yeah so about me um so i've been cooking for as long as i can remember i've grown up in a household of first generation immigrants from india yeah. Um, came over in the 60s and born and raised in London, so always surrounded by a complete eclectic mix of different cultures, um, West Indian, Irish, Italian, French, North this African. This is what I love about London. Food. It is, it's great. Yeah. We just, just, we're fully exposed to just <clears throat> not only the cultures as you saw them at school or in the streets, uh, but also the smells, the aromas and the flavours of people cooking. Yeah. Um, you hear them, you can just smell them from the house next door. Um, so I was really exposed to a lot of the um, amazing different types of cuisines. Very young. How old were really you? you I mean, well, I was actually born in South London and then raised in North West London, uh, Dollis Hill. Um, so yeah, from a very young age, always just been exposed to that. But at the same time, um, being exposed to that, we grew up in a shop. So my parents had a shop. We lived above the shop, so uh, what kind of shop? A uh, grocery shop, just All right, selling okay. yeah. food, newspapers, yeah. uh, anything really that people wanted to buy. Uh, yeah. We sold it in our shop for the local community. Yeah. This is before all the big supermarkets came yeah, along. Yeah, I like that. Um, I like the little community. We have that in Brazil as well. People yeah. grow up, well, as you guys know, probably me. Grew up in a farm as well. Well, not you. You grew in London, <laughs> in London. I grew up in a very little mm -hmm. town in Brazil as well. And cooking was a big passion as well. You, I see. I, what I read about you is lots of similarity. We have lots of similarity because we we love the passion for food. Become so young age, mm. and um, so that it put all the flavors and experience all the cultures. I see. Also, you've been traveling quite a lot. What about that traveling? Yes. Yeah, so. Um I've had a long career, had a fantastic career in, in, I was working in engineering for, for 22 years, I graduated from the engine, with an engineering degree, mm -hmm. went and worked for a, a huge um, engineering company, um, was there leading different parts of the business in the automotive space, mainly sales, project management and commercial management, but it meant that I could go and live in Germany for three years, uh, lived in the US for five years. And as part of my job, I got to travel the world. Yeah, uh, and experience the, the cuisine in all these places, yeah, it was isn't amazing. it? I just I love going to Brazil, spent a lot of time in Sao Paulo, in Bahia Did as well. Did you? Yeah. Oh, check you out. I loved going up What do you prefer? Uh, uh, Did you been to Rio now? No, never got a chance to go to Rio. Um, I was going because that's where the business was. It was all, you know, when you're on business trips, you go for a purpose, right? You go there, yeah. you're there for yeah. a week, and it's yeah. really quite intense. But also like the fact that while I was in Brazil, that the culture I found was such that 
you work, but then you go out and have a good time. You yeah, know, you always go food, out and socialise yeah. with with friends, and you're out till quite late. Um, but in a in a really positive way, you know, it's yeah. lots of talking, lots of food, a uh, few drinks as well, a bit oh. of dancing. Caipirinha, did you try caipirinha? Caipirinha, oh, many types of different types of caipirinha. Oh my god! Classics, lots of different fruits in this. there. We mm. should do one today. All right, I'll have caipirinha. Drink. I'd love to have a caipirinha. You're gonna make one? <laughs> no, no. I'm no expert no, in. Cocktails. No, don't drink, guys. Don't drink. Half <laughs> <Okay. hundred. laughs> No, no when I'm not working. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's say it's five o'clock somewhere. But, uh, Probably. <laughs> yeah. No, but that was great. So I got to travel yeah. to lots of different places, spent time in Brazil, um, China, lots of Europe. Um, and by being in those different places, got to experience the, the local local food that people yeah. were eating. Yeah. Um, and then I always tried to come home and replicate some of it. Um, That's what I like. A lot of things didn't work out. Yeah, but doesn't trying matter. isn't it? But cooking is that trying, trying to do your your signature on that what you like. Yeah, it? exactly. Yeah, and uh, like for example, when I was in Sao Paulo, I loved to go to the market. There's like a central market in Sao yeah. Paulo, indoor market. Yeah, the one. most amazing spices and fruits and vegetables, and I just grab what I could and bring it back home and and try to you know create some dishes from that and I, I try to do the same wherever I was traveling around yeah. the world so that was really good great experience got to see the world um, and the last the last assignment that I was on was in the US and my family and I we decided that we wanted to come back to the UK we've got a big extended family here in the UK we want to be closer to them yeah um, and then the role that was available was uh, based in the Midlands so we landed in Leamington Spa oh and Lucky that us. was mm. in 2020. And oh, that's not far. Yeah, it was really quite recent, so we're yeah. quite new to, to the area. But in that time, we've just, just really loved the community, really absorbed ourselves in the community. Uh, my wife's very strong in the community with her, with her work as well. And we just fell in love with, with the place. And we've been in Leamington Spa now. And I say, I was working in a corporate, and uh, it, it got to a stage where... I was just thinking about what the future was going to hold for us yeah. as a family. Uh, what were things that were really exciting me, things that I was passionate about, mm -hmm. and whether I could continue to do those things inside the business or whether I'd try something else. And then uh, in 2022, I, I took a punt and entered the Home Cook of the Year with Aubrey Allen oh, uh, at the Lemsden Food yeah, Fest. I saw this, yeah, I saw that, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Yeah, and I won it, so I was really excited by that. What did you cook? I cooked uh, my version of a shepherd's pie. I call it a desi shepherd's pie. Ooh, desi what? being anything, we use it colloquially to say anything from India. Oh, uh, I see. Uh, so yeah, I, I made an Indian version of a shepherd's pie. Um, How fantastic! I saw. I think I saw that actually on when I was reading about. Oh you. yeah. Okay. Cool. I saw that. Hmm, I've been working on you. <laughs> I did. And um, so that is that where you started your scratch uh, cook so social. Yeah. Well, that was a bit of a catalyst for me. I mean, scratch cook social as an idea was something I've had for some time. What's this name? What scratch cook? Yeah. No. Where did it come from? Well, take me later just to me to say it. <laughs> I can't, I'm not English, I can't say long words. <laughs> you do it well though, you got it, yeah. Um, no, so cooking from scratch is, is a fundamental meaning yeah, behind Scratch yeah. Cook Social. I, cooking from yeah. scratch, bringing people together, creating community around food that is cooked from scratch. Um, so that was the original idea that I came up with. Then yeah. I still was still working. I had no idea how I was going to use it, mm -hmm. but I liked the idea of bringing I people do. together around yeah. food. Um, but then, obviously, the, the, had the catalyst of that, <clears throat> the award for the Home Cook of the Year. Yeah. Well, maybe I can do some bit more serious with this. And, and that you already stopped working as an no, engineer? No, I still working. Oh, okay. I was still, working. Let me I was just still catch in my corporate world. So, so you're still working as an engineer? Until 2022, I was still working. Uh, and then doing the, the, the scratch cooking uh, social on the weekends? I wasn't even doing it on the weekends. Oh, I wasn't doing anything with it. That was just the name that I came up with. And I wasn't really, I was only cooking for fun. I was cooking yeah. for family, cooking for fun. I love that. I, yeah. um, I picked up a lot of barbecuing tips from living in the US. Mm -hmm. So I was coming back and just barbecuing as much as I could, combining Indian flavors into barbecuing, using certain Indian spices to bring out the smoky flavor yeah. in barbecuing. So I was, I was doing some of that after coming back from the US. Um, but no, I was still working, I was in a full-time job. And then at the beginning of 2023, so about a yeah. year ago, um, after some contemplation about 
what I wanted to do. Um, I decided that I wanted to move away from my corporate job that I was in. That's it, a big step, isn't it? It was, and I, you know, it was, I'm so grateful for all the experience I had inside that company. I learned so much, met some amazing people, worked with some of the biggest experts in their field. Um, but for me, it just got to a point where living here in the Midlands, um, trying to create a life for my family, not moving around again. Do you got then, kids? Yeah, two, two kids, two daughters, two kids. 16 and 11. Um, yeah, just wanted to find some somewhere to, for us to settle. Yeah. And we really, as soon as we moved to Leamington Spa, we just loved it, fell in love with it. And we thought, yeah, actually, we could see us spending the rest of our lives here. Yeah. So that was another catalyst. And then I took the opportunity to, uh, yeah, to... Explore. To decide to leave and experiment <clears throat> with different oh. things. So I spent 2023 experimenting with different ideas with Scratch Cook Social. And... Um, yeah, from since the beginning of this year, Scratch Cook Social is now a fully formed business. And do you been doing uh, what with that? Did you yeah, do, so did you did what you did after. So you've said, oh, I've got to set up a, a business <laughs> with the world of, of cooking, uh, Shepherd's Pie. Now, oh, finish this job, I don't want anymore. So I want to do Scratch Cook all the time. Yeah. So what did you do? Did you I did. start to do? I saw, I saw you did some stuff on like pop-up restaurant like I did. Mm. That was, that is quite nice. I like that idea. One of the things that we found by moving to the area was that uh, the sense of community is very, very high. Yeah. Here. People really that, yeah. reach out and help each other. If, if yeah. you want to do something, there are so <clears throat> many people here that say, hey, I can help you do this. Come and try this with us. So the first opportunity was with um, Dessa Cafe in, in Lemon Spa, yeah. or Regent Grove. Uh, Cynthia, who runs that place, invited me along to do a kitchen takeover or a pop-up because she's open during the day but closed in the evening. Oh, okay. So, so it was you, at night? It was in the evening, yeah. yeah okay, so um, I think one of the first ones was like on a Friday night. Mm -hmm. um, I advertised a four-course meal um, and we had, yeah, we had a sellout of people coming along. Oh, fantastic. Trying my food out. Um, so what do you cook on this night out? Is it various or you just... Or it's just Indian or just mix of all the, the cultures that you learn through, through your life traveling? Yeah, no, it's a good question. So they're traditionally um, Indian flavors, yeah. so really deep Indian flavors. But then using techniques of cooking that I've picked up along the way from around the world or things that I've watched on YouTube or cooks on TV or restaurants that I've been to. Did so you just try, did you, did you do any classes on cooking? I did a couple of classes. Yeah. Like I, um, I did, I went to one of the Michelle Rue's cooking schools for a day, like yeah. a day course on that. Learned but some amazing help, techniques. isn't it? When you learn oh, yeah. from someone like this, is putting the incredible. hands there, yeah. yeah they, and you, you got the, already got the talent. I think you already got your, what I see and heard about you, you're very um, talent. Mm. You, 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 <laughs> if you, <laughs> You're an engineer, but actually, you got a chef inside of you, yeah, and that I is the main thing, there. isn't it? There is things that you can you can go to school to learn, but if you don't have the talent, it doesn't go anywhere. I have friends that I give the recipe and they cannot cook. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just good to have the uh, to know how to do certain things, which yeah. um, technique. I think the Techniques, technique with yeah. anything, it's having some knowledge, but also having some technique understanding or skills yeah. understanding and that was useful to to pick up on those things yeah. so yeah I've done so not your too nights much. are basically doing a mix of all the thing and in, in, in indian more flavors indian, indian flavors, indian flavors techniques from around the world but i really like to present it in a contemporary style i think if people are going to go to a restaurant um i think the food has always got to be um, unbelievable yeah i'm looking for flavors i'm looking for textures I'm looking for layering, mm -hmm. um, but I also want it to be easy on the eye. So really try and excite all the senses. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, if you yeah, sometimes go to a restaurant. Yeah, the amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it's, it's important for me that all the, f the food that I put and create and that people pay good money to come and try um, has to be hitting all the senses. Yeah. Um, so that's really the target of the food that I put out. So you said about the scratch cooking, but I saw as well that you bought me something else that you're doing. You were like a super busy man. <laughs> Try the big So yeah. you got something, let me see mm. the, 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 the be, logo. Yeah. I need to read this up because you guys know, uh, I can't remember names. Bon correct me if I'm wrong. No, Bongo, Boni, 
Bunny. Bunny. Let's see, B U for me is boo, but boo, for you okay, it's bunny. Bo bunny? No, it's bunny. Bongo. Bunny. Oh, bunny chow. Yeah. Bunny chow. Bongo, what bunny is chow. that? Bong, yeah, so, bongo, uh, bunny chow. Bunny oh, chow. Oh. So, bunny chow, first of all, is is a South African dish. It originates from Durban. It's a, yeah. a Durbanite street food. Um, and effectively, it is half a loaf, or what they call a quarter loaf of bread, with the inside scooped out and then filled with curry. Oh, I um, like that. Some nice little salad on top, a bit of sauce. And then the inside is put back on top, wrapped up, and you go and eat the whole thing. Oh, wow. Um, but it originates in Durban, and there's a connection to Durban through my business partner, uh, oh, okay. Craig, who's, who was born and raised in Durban. He lives here now. And we were in the pub one evening, June last year. Like everybody and, do, you know. Yeah, one of those crazy things are a few glasses <laughs> of wine. He said, hey Raj, I think we should probably do a business together. Let's, let's make bunny chows. Uh, I was like, oh, okay, what's that then? And uh, we talked about it and he gave me some insights. And then, yeah, six months later, we've now got Bongo Bunny Chow as a brand. It's a street food brand. Do you already, already show this street food already in, around workshop? We we had our first event in December okay. 2023. Um, that was our first market stall that we had at Warwick, Saturday market. But the intention of the brand is to take Bongo Bunny Chow as a new street food concept, South African street food concept oh. uh, across the UK and 2024 about getting to festivals, yeah. food festivals, and also music Ooh, festivals. I like that. And this curry, that is, is a curry that is more like Indian curry? Or? Yeah, it is. It's oh, Indian style I didn't curry. Know. So Indian curry in South Africa? Yeah, so that's another great connection that's as well. Amazing, because I think the story goes that in the, I'd say, late, in the 1800s, some, some point in the yeah. 1800s, there was mass migration from India to South Africa and Durban is one of the closest ports that oh, you know the ships would come across okay. and the Indian workers coming over to work on the plantations sugarcane plantations oh, okay that and, explains and oh. they would want to have their own food uh, while working but very little time to cook when you're on a plantation yeah so they cook the curry at home bring it to plantation in this bread it's no, and that's plate, where the bunny chow came plate. from it doesn't yeah, need a plate fantastic so idea. I think that's where the story that's comes really good. from yeah. um, so the curries are all very much yeah, Indian traditional flavors. And we do a lamb bunny chow, uh, which is our original lamb bunny, we call the OLB. We do a bunny chick, which is a chicken curry. And we do a vegan bunny, which is made with chickpeas. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So you got, you got two. So you got the, the posh, as to say, the posh. <laughs> All the, the little things on the table with the with the, the so the, with the scratch cook. It's what I'm understanding. I don't know yeah. if you guys understand the same as I am, <laughs> but uh, it's the 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 plate very pretty and all that on the restaurants. And then you got the other one, which is bongo bon, boni bunny bunny you can ah, get it there bunny chow bunny chow bunny bong bongo. So the brand is bongo. Yeah, so actually Bongo, Bongo is a nickname for my business partner Craig oh, as he was growing up. So hello, we decided Bongo, to call it Bongo, call it Bongo <laughs> Bunny Chows and nod to his upbringing really as well. Very good, very good, very good idea. I like the logo as well. Did you do the Thank logo? You. Yeah, yeah, we came up with that logo. You did that logo well? as well? Yeah. The scratch book? Yeah. I know, you are very, bi I'm very impressed because I, be me, who knows me, um, knows that I like to, not I like, I had to do everything on my mm. brand. Yeah. Because it's quite a lot of money when you're starting as well. So I'm very adventurous. I go, <laughs> I've got a challenge. <laughs> I love a challenge, so I start to do everything as well on my brand, did the brand and everything, did some help in the end, but yeah, but this is really good. I, I just saw that you launched your website to Scratch Cookbook, Scratch Cook, so there's another thing, Scratch Cookbook. Uh, maybe, maybe, that's uh, something that's Percentage the Percentage for me, please, you just okay. need to, 10% for me, please, you guys know that I did. <laughs> <laughs> so it's scratch, scratch cook social. You, I, know, I just know that you launched your website was not long ago, last week, I think. That's right, yeah. Really yeah. good. You did that as well. Yeah, yeah. I, like you do. Well, you know. The great thing is a lot of good tools out there now to try and create a website. <laughs> so uh, it was all about content, making sure the content was right. You know, scratch cook social is for me the food experience company. So there's, I'd say, three major parts to it. One is creating experiences which are be team building, so drawing on my corporate uh, experience, um, working with 
international teams and then using spices as a vehicle to create team building experiences yeah. around those. Mm. Um, or doing Indian master classes. So yeah, going I saw that. Homes. You've got classes as well. Um, is it classes learn. online or is classes? No, it's in person. In so class? it's like going to people's homes. Yeah. And let's say a group of people want to learn how to let's make an Indian feast. Oh. And they will do an Indian masterclass at home. Oh. Or private dining. People don't want to cook, oh, but they just want to have I did that. It's really some nice. of my food, uh, be it four course or seven course menus, want to entertain some friends or family, but in a private setting rather than being a restaurant. So yeah. those are the experiences that's really good that I idea. create. Yeah, that's 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 one arm of mm -hmm. Scratch Cook Social. Under events, we do things like the pop-up dining experiences, mm -hmm. kitchen takeovers that we talked about. Um, also introducing spice blending nights and uh, got a few events taking place this year with Grace and Vine in Leamington Spa. Mm -hmm. where They're guess, great. Yeah, I love, uh, yeah. love the atmosphere. Darren, the isn't wine. Darren? Darren yeah, yeah, Darren's great. They're such wonderful people as well. So mm -hmm. welcoming, accommodating. Their food is also really great. Oh, delicious. I've um, been there. So yeah, working with Grace and Vine to do those. And guests can come along, learn about whole spices, whole Indian spices how to use them, understanding the characters, which one to use and what type of dish. And then also create your own masala blend uh, oh, before you go yeah. home. Oh, yeah, so this is evening. what you got uh, for us with your chicken. Yeah, I've got my own masala blend, which I'll come to in a moment Did as you well. you bought me some? I definitely bought you some. Let me see the pot, show me the pot. There's a pot Oh, it's here. a pot like this. Oh, look at that. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, can I open? Yeah, I that's yours. That's stuff. yours to open. Oh, this guy. Oh. So, oh God, during that spice really blending good. night, uh, guests will learn about the spices that go going to make this one, but they can make their own masala blend depending yeah. on how they want to yeah. use it. So the spice blending well, night. This is yours. That's my one. You and can actually, buy that as yeah, well. Yeah, you can buy that uh, on, your, on my website. On your website. Yeah. Oh, guys, need to check. Because <laughs> if, if you feel the smell that the chicken we have for today is a chicken something or I don't know exactly what yeah so this can be used as a marinade uh, I originally created that uh, for barbecuing as I mentioned earlier I like oh, to really? barbecue oh, okay I barbecue with like Indian flavors mm -hmm. so I created that as a dry rub for for lamb so you can um, use chicken rum, you love, can use any, it on any kind of meat? vegetables as well that's oh, really well on vegetables you can even dry cure fish using this as well. So if you're gonna make a dry cure with let's say salt and sugar as you normally would yeah. do, you can add some masala in there. How um, great. It's just a really versatile rub. You could also use a finishing spice uh, for curries. If you have a curry and you just want to lift the flavor at the end, is it, put a sprinkle is on the it end. Is it chili as well? Or is, it's or got is red medium. chili in there as well. But it's medium, what do you think? Is it's medium, it's not, it's not, it's not, not too um, much. it's not, let's say, a, a heated spice yeah but it's got, but it's got nine a different kick it has because it's got nine different spices in them oh, and so the okay. different spices are given different types of flavors maybe it's a bit peppery mm -hmm. maybe it's a bit cinnamony so it's not so fiery yeah. but it's got maybe a sweetness to yeah. it or smokiness coming let's say from the black ginger. cardamom mm -hmm. uh, no ginger it's all no ginger? dry they're all dry spices whole oh, dry spices okay just dry okay yeah. mm -hmm. Fantastic, I can't wait to try. What are you cooking to us today? Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm cooking a uh, masala supreme of chicken and mm -hmm. um, that's going to be pan seared um, and we're going to sit that on top of some masala crushed sweet corn that's oh. cut through with some coconut milk as well Oh. and then finish it off with some pickled onions. Oh my gosh. Sorry guys, I'm really sorry you know, cannot try that because they smell here. It's already amazing. This is really great idea. Very good. I love the, the, the all the wrapping thing here. The, the, oh, the you. Or you call it embalaging in English. Is labeling? Labeling, yeah, yeah that's fine. right. Labeling. Yeah. So I love it. The packaging. 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 Yeah. Packaging is what, yeah, that's right. It's really packaging. cool. I love that. Love that. Yeah, appreciate so, that. So, you're one year, right? One year already with the scratch cook uh, social. What is your challenge? You, you, because you, you've came from a, yeah. you know. Oh, challenges, yeah. Engineering thing, and then now your own business and it's quite different yeah, quite transition different. there. <laughs> no, <laughs> a definitely. big difference, actually. I think the challenge is coming out of a corporate life that I lived for, you know, for such a long period mm -hmm. of my career. Uh, and then coming out to work by myself. Just the whole process of trying to set up a business. Yeah. Um, you don't realize until you're doing it, the different facets uh, yeah. from setting up a company to getting bank accounts, to getting insurance, to getting approvals from local council to 
cook from your home. Um, Their marketing. The, the marketing, the website, the Instagram, Everything, the socials. Yeah. It's it's so many things. It's so right. many things. And it's not realizing when you first go into it that no. there are so many yeah. things. Um, so I think those were, the challenge was trying to get my head around all of those items. Um, but I think what was really helpful was, I mentioned before, the community around Leamington or Warwick has been so great that, you know, I could lean on different people, yeah. like lean on establishments like Cafe Dessa uh -huh. to run like pop-up events, afternoon tea, yeah. or lean on the likes of Aubrey Allen to sponsor events. So all of our meat, when I'm using my meat, comes from Aubrey Allen, but it's for Bonga Bunny Chow or for Scratch Cook Social, mm -hmm. or working with other partners to pair drinks like beer. Mm -hmm. Empress Ale yeah. was another one of my sponsors for one of my events. So it's drawing in all those people together, uh, together to collaborate, uh, everyone can bring something to the table and everyone's really open to do that like what we're doing today yeah it's all through collaboration so yeah having that having that community and the opportunity to collaborate with other people has made made it easier yeah um, and that is what is the show about the show yeah. is, is all because what when Absolutely. people talk about me about you guys and I'm like yes because I think if you guys are doing well we, it's what we want to spotlight, put the spotlight on you. How can we help? How can we do to, to you know, people know about you as well? Because yeah. maybe they know about your food, but they don't know who is behind the brand. And it's what we want to show. We want to hear the story of people. And your story is fantastic. You, you know, you bring so much <laughs> already. <laughs> and I hope you're going to be massive because I think the potential, there's lots of potential that you not stop. And uh, in, you see it with your passion as well, you talk about things. You talk, food is passion, is a way to show. And this goes to the food as well. Uh, the, 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 for sure, the people knows that is, um, everything you do is good with passion and it's make a big change. So your challenge is that, is, I, I can imagine your challenge. And how, what is, do you think is your um, accomplishment? Accomplishments. Yeah. Mm. First year was all about experimentation. Yeah. And I think to have, first of all, create a bongo bunny chow in six months yeah from idea to getting a stall up and running um again with a great business partner that was a major accomplishment for me mm -hmm. um actually having success and positive feedback from my events with scratch cook social be it the pop-up dining the spice blending or even team build events that i did as well yeah um having that feedback to say yeah raj you're on the right path over here uh getting feedback from others about how to improve it um, I think those are some major accomplishments. That is, um, yeah. I think it comes more and more as well because you're just a baby with your, your, with your, your the, the scratch cook is just a, one year. It's, it's a time for people to understand about your business yeah. and all that as well. So I think it's lots more to come. If you die tomorrow, not, no, gonna, nobody gonna die, okay? Everybody's fine. But who would be your, what would be your last meal? So it's like, oh my God, this is my favorite. I think it would have to be a feast of different things. Like oh, uh, it has to that. be. Because <laughs> I don't say that. <laughs> oh, it has to be. It's got to be. It's got to be Tapas. some elements. <laughs> it's got to be an element of my mum's home cooked food, uh, my wife Mita's food that she makes, uh, food that I've had with friends, restaurants that I've just enjoyed going to over the years. I think there's just just too many. I a think, feast. I don't think it's fair enough. It wouldn't be fair to die, I think. That's the point. Oh, I'd have to just keep that's, eating. That's a good thing. <laughs> well, David, David would be happy to die if he had a steak. Steak, yeah, Aren't steak. They? Okay, I get that. Yeah. David's, David's in love with the steak. Yeah, I, I teach him to cook because before he would, oh. Do you know what he should do? Marry we'll David. Wrap it up here. No. <laughs> I came to How long England. We got? I came to England. <laughs> I didn't told him that I can cook. And I came to England and I said, Oh, I, I fancy traveling 12 hours in a, in a plane. I'm like, Yeah, I want to go to eat something nice. Oh, Dave, just a soup will be fine. Okay, no problem. He brings a soup, one a bowl, like tomato soup, creamy. Mm, mm. Beautiful. Did it taste all right? It was not like, oh my God, but it was like, wow, he can do a soup and it was screaming. I got to the kitchen, I saw a tin. What the heck is this? A tin for soup? We don't have this in Brazil. Oh, well, we know. probably okay. do, but I never had a, no. a, a soup from a tin. <laughs> He's done all right. 
You You're see, lucky girl. he called me to ask, how can I boil egg? He asked me, how can I boil egg? But he does nice pancake. cake. He does nice pancake. cake. Everyone has a See, place. Dave. Everyone has space in the kitchen. Yeah. yeah. A place in he the kitchen. Did a, but he used to do. He used to do lots of this chicken, frozen vegetables, and put in. It was quite quick. That was. We have to go. I have to say that was quick. Raj, you got kids in school still? I do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you got two, and two, oh, two in the. They'll walk back home by themselves now. They're at that oh, age where they can right. walk home and. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So your 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 suppose your your wife is she she's also works on a business with you or not? No, she's got her own business. She's naturally nourished with Mita. It's a wellness business. She specializes in EFT, so tapping. Oh yeah. To Lord. help with stress management and uh, dealing with really emotions good. and yeah. trauma. Yeah. yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. But she never helps you on well, on, 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 on a thing. She, she does actually. She's you, helped out. Like my, me, I bring David. Oh God, my, on, but squirk with me, Dave. <laughs> my daughter Maddie has come to work as well at Scratch oh. Social. My wife has helped out as well. Oh, how fantastic! Um, and also, I do. Um, I'm supporting her and some of her retreats. I'm doing for her when she hosts like day retreats. Like she's got a business owners retreat coming up and uh, a men's retreat coming up. Yeah. Then I'll do the catering for that. Did you tell me about your favorite cuisine? I've, do you, I did, do so you have one? I have, I don't have a favorite cuisine. I, said, I, like, I like to try and experiment with, I like to understand the story behind the food that I'm eating. Yeah. Um, you know, there's <clears throat> one of my favorite chefs is more driven by their exploration of how people eat food, why people eat the food they eat, how they come together as a community. Anthony Bourdain did wonderful things uh, that is with his... The, the, is that what would be my next, my next question then? So ah, your okay. favorite, Your favourite chef were you inspired by? Yeah, inspired by. I was always inspired by watching Anthony Bourdain. He, so when I was travelling, you know, travelling across the world and then you get to a hotel quite late at night and there's one TV channel that's always going to be on at CNN International. And then Anthony Bourdain, Parts Unknown, was okay. a TV show that you'd always be able to watch. Mm. And he's going around just different countries, but he's not going to the places that like flash restaurants. Yeah. He's going to the, as he calls, Parts Unknown, to get to the underbelly of the you, countries you and the cities. You eat the real food. Yeah, exactly. You eat the so real food. How really you know inspired the by food. that and the stories behind that. Yeah. And, um, I so, love to hear people's stories. Yeah, exactly. It. So for me, when it comes to cuisine, I like to understand where it's coming yeah. from. Yeah. Why do people cook in a certain way? Why do you use certain ingredients? Why is it prepared in a certain way uh, and presented? And uh, yeah, there's there's something behind. Understanding yeah, that. I do like that too. Where can we find your brand? Where can you find? Yeah, Scratch so Cook. Scratch Cook Social. We are www.scratchcook.social, and you'll also find us on socials: Instagram, Scratch Cook Social. Um, Not about the, the, the street food one. Yeah, and then Bongo's got its own. So on, so Scratch Cook Social, we've got the website up and running. Um, yes, everything's that looks there. very nice. You'll find everything that we're doing, events, experiences, masala, uh, merchandise as well. I think hopefully we're going to be putting some merch out. Yeah, That's a request good. on the caps and the aprons. Mm, very nice um, one. And then Bongo Bunny Chow has its own website. So that's www.bongobunnychow.com. Mm -hmm. And also has its own socials, uh, Instagram and TikTok, uh, Bongo Bunny Chow. And that's where we'll be really sharing all the events that we're going to be at because mm -hmm. during the year 2024, we're basically getting booked on to new events every time. And so we'll be posting it on socials and you come down and have a bunny chow. Yeah, that's really yeah. good. Um, I, I like the... Um, I like the old idea. It's really, really interesting. So what are your long-term goal? The, the goal at the moment, whether it's long-term or not, I mean, we're always reluctant to talk about too many long-term goals, but certainly um, it's to try to create a life and a living doing things that I really love. Yeah. And I, I want to I create a life making food through Scratch Cook Food Social and food experiences on one hand. On the other hand, I want to do the street food as well with Bongo Bunny Chow. I want those to become a success. I want them to be, you know, ubiquitous in the in the food uh, yeah. industry that people know what we're about. And also want to be a role model. I want to be a role model for my kids and uh, friends and family to say, you know, put your mind to something and go out and try to achieve it. I think those are my goals at the yeah. moment. They always change, right? So of course, yeah. Goal can see. change, yeah. But you you know what you want. You you show your passion. 
for what you're doing. When you do something that you do with passion, does that, isn't it? This, this driven that we have. And, and I think that is what I think the goal can change the post. You yeah, know? yeah. So I think for now, I think it's quite good. I like the idea. I can't wait to what we're going to eat today. <laughs> uh, so you already said to me what we're going to, um, what you're going to cook today. Yeah. So the chicken and... Um, yeah, so we're going to make... Uh, um, a, mas uh, a chicken that's been marinated in with, the masala. With the masala. Uh, and we'll go through that with lots of like ginger chili and garlic. And we're gonna pan sear that. I'm gonna do that French style, so lots of butter, some herbs mm. in there as well. And I'm gonna cook that off in the oven just to get that finished. Ooh. And then we're gonna have a nice uh, crushed sweet corn masala. Oh, I love that. Cut through with some ginger curry leaves and some coconut. And then just some fresh pickle onion to go on top. I can't wait. Yeah, I that sounds very excited, very excited. Because you've been already successful in your career mm. as an engineer. Uh -huh. So you have new adventure now. What do you think is going to be the secret or your secret for a great success business? Hmm. Uh, so obviously just starting out fresh. Um, I, I, believe it's, I believe it's going to come down to being passionate about what you're doing, being passionate about the business, really being passionate Agreed. about wanting to make it work. Also having an idea about really where the business is going, so being very clear about the, the intent of the business. I yeah. think intention is really important. It's intention and purpose. Following through, not being afraid to fail. I think I'm gonna, body, yeah. I think through the experimentation last year, I yeah. realized a few things that are just simply I'd love to do, but they're not necessarily going to work know, on that moment. Going to be really perhaps. good from a business perspective. Yeah. So, deciding which things work and don't work, and yeah. then be willing to just let them go, but yeah. not being too emotionally connected with them. I think those are going to be important things. But I'd say, ask me again a year from now, and and I might. So on a diary, put on a diary. I might know. I might know a bit more. I might have learned. I definitely learned a lot more. I think. Then. I think you already said. I think it's yeah. when you do things with passion, and of course, with clear goal that you know where the goal can post can change. Yeah, yeah. But you have a clear goal where you want to be, and when you're doing well, and then receiving what you having the listen to the feedback. You, I think this is a big part, and is why you're here because people call and said we want. Yeah, what about so. these guys? Why are they they not there? And um, and I can't wait to try your food. <laughs> Let's cook. Guys, now we're at the kitchen with Raj. Oh, Raj, this is amazing, guys. Oh, my God. The smells that's going here is something from another world. <laughs> well, actually, from my kitchen. <laughs> I love it. You guys are going to love this. Raj, what are we cooking again? We're going to do the chicken. We've got, we've got so many uh, spices. Here, but yeah. also, they all rep repeat some of them, isn't it? So yes, don't, be scared. Do. Yep. don't be scared. Don't be scared with so much spices. Oh, my God. I'm not full of water. <laughs> Just looking. What are we going to do first? We we'll do marinating chicken first, then we're going to do sweet corn, and then we're going to finally finish it off with the third element, which is the pickle onions. So. Oh, fantastic. He's already brought me one, as you guys know. This is already marinated overnight, so we need, he likes the fish, I like as well. Ah, oh, could it's raw. Oh my God. Yeah. And, um, also, not a good idea. Don't eat raw don't chicken. Don't eat chicken raw. <laughs> don't eat chicken raw. <laughs> Yeah, but he really. bought this uh, this chicken already marinated overnight, isn't it? Yeah. I like marinate my chicken overnight. Sometimes I buy the chicken mm. and I already marinate everything and then put on a on a on a fridge. Next day I freeze them all. That's, That's great, all yeah. good. And then when I take it out, ready. But he already That's marinate for overnight. But if you can't, you can marinate two hours, two hours and a half. Yeah, two three hours. Yeah, is fine. fantastic. So right. let's do the marinade. So are you doing your marinade? Yes. Yeah, so goes? we start off with the normal basic ingredients that we have in Indian cooking. Yeah. Um, we have garlic. These are just peeled cloves of garlic. And I'm using about eight, eight See cloves guys, of garlic. See guys, the secret. You don't put just one or two. Some people are scared to put garlic because the garlic is going to cook and they don't think, you know. Yeah. So that is amazing. How many that one, two, three, four, five, eight. six, seven, eight. About eight cloves of garlic. About 30 grams. And this is for four portions over here. So it's going to okay. feed four people this yeah. dish. They call it Supreme Chicken because it still has the bone on there as well. And it's skinless mm. as well. So mm. normally with Indian cooking, we don't normally cook the skin on. No. We always take the skin off. Your butcher can take it off. Yeah, I got these from Aubrey Allen. And they're yeah. great. If you say you just want the skin off, they'll take the skin off you. They are amazing. Aubrey Allen, they're amazing. Um, we've got garlic. Then we've got an uh, equal amount of ginger. Yeah, so Come this on. is just um, 
root ginger, yeah, peeled, and then chopped. Mm -hmm. So it's about 30 grams of garlic, 30 grams of ginger. Okay. Now I'm using four green chilies. Um, they're pretty spicy, mm -hmm. but the only thing with chilies is you never know how hot they're going to be. Right? Yeah. You buy them from the shop, you don't know how hot they're going to be. Um, I always buy my ginger, garlic and chilies from local Indian store. Yeah. Oh, um, me too. I love it. Um, and you get everything fresh, daily fresh, yeah, all these things. Yeah, and yeah. They're more consistent on, on the heat. So yeah. four, let's say one chili per uh, per, per, per breast. Per breast. Yeah, okay, per breast. fantastic. Um, right. And we just need those and we, know, we want to mince those all up. Now you could chop them up by hand. Yeah. Uh, or, or just put in your, your power for thing. He's really good. Just a little. He said every engine has every get has. One, one of this. Exactly. And I'm just going to make it a little bit easier by just chopping them up a little bit to, to make them a bit smaller. There we go. And yeah, all the... Very pasty, isn't it? So what else can I use that? You, you, you use this oh, mix with well, so anything. You make a curry, you go, it goes in a curry. If you're making any marinades, it goes in that. So you can do this and leave in the fridge on a, on a very sealed sealed uh, glass pot. I usually do mine like that. You can. Do you put salt on that? No, we leave it. We leave it as well for the marinade. Yes. For the marinade. But yes. just as its base ingredient, no. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing we'd leave in it in the fridge, the garlic. Um, doesn't like to be kept too in the long. air for too long. No, yeah, my mom said that. So doesn't like to put if you, too long. If you lose want, the flavour, isn't it? Yeah, if it is. Losing. So, like what you said earlier, you put your marinade, your chicken, and you freeze it. Yeah. Freezing this is quite good. You can make it all up in bulk and yeah. put them into ice cube trays. Yeah. And then when you're ready, ready to cook, you just pop out pop one out, cube yeah. and then stick How it in How great chicken. idea. You guys have this as well because this is a very good mix. If you don't like the chili, because you want oh too spicy just don't have have the chili but the, the ginger and the garlic is yeah, it's lovely absolutely sometimes my mom does that and put some coriander inside as well mix very oh yeah good. then you can very make good. a chutney so the next thing we're going to put in here is my tandoori masala oh yeah it is, you guys can buy that from from raj website what exactly. is it this is uh, at scratchcook.social this is um available on the store there and it's a pretty versatile uh, masala, as I mentioned earlier, you can use many things, but today we're using it as a marinade, and I'm going to use two tablespoons. Two tablespoons. Two tablespoons. Mm. Um, oh, this smells amazing. Now, the masala here has only got dry spices. There's nine yeah. dry spices. It's yeah. got no salt, so we've got to add salt. So I'm going to put about two teaspoons of salt in here. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to need a bit of oil. I'm going to put two tablespoons in. Okay. You need an oil with a high smoking point. Oh, okay. Because we're going to sear, ah, sear okay, this. Okay. And if it doesn't have a high smoking point, the oil is going to become rancid. And you're going to, yeah, yeah. Not a very Coconut nice oil flavor. is good for that as Coconut well. Coconut oil is good. This yeah, is avocado an, oil. Avocado, as well, avocado yeah. oil is good. Mm -hmm, yeah. um, with avocado, you might get a bit of flavor that flavor, you don't yeah, like yeah. into it. So I'm using a light olive oil. But now we've got our ginger garlic chili paste in here. We've got tandoori masala. We've got our uh, salt. Yeah. We've got some oil. And I also like to add a bit of lemon, just a little squeeze. Oh. Uh, whoops. I love both. Sorry them. to squeeze you. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> squeeze, squeeze me. <laughs> squeeze you. I already asked him to scratch. Can you Sorry scratch? Sorry to squeeze you. Not to squeeze you. <laughs> Very good. There we are. So here's our paste. Oh. Go ahead and try some. Oh, a little bit, just a tiny bit, because I'm scared. Yeah. <laughs> that got a kick. Too hot. It's delicious. There we are. That's our marinade. I mean, just see. Oh my god, delicious! If you don't have chicken supremes, it doesn't matter. You can just get chicken breast. That's also fine. Yeah. But just basically pick up the chicken, put the marinade onto the chicken, mm -hmm. and rub it all in. Rub it all in. in. That's all it. done. And use up all of it. Use up all of it. Um, use all. You cannot save for later. Just nope, use. Just use it, it all up in the chicken. Yeah. In the fridge overnight if you can otherwise you know uh, yeah. three hours the next thing we're going to do is get our sweet corn on this is about 350 grams you'll get the yeah. full ingredients but about 350 grams of sweet corn and we just pass this through a food processor yeah all right that's a, so how much your uh, so about two tablespoons two tablespoons, two tablespoons of, of coconut, coconut oil, oil. Coconut yeah. oil. yeah. 
on the very hot pan. Uh, that's just go. bits of the sweet corn that I use. That's okay. It's fine, it's no fine, girl, no problem. So, right, yeah. so we're going to heat that up. Um, now I'm going to have this on a pretty high heat. This goes up to... This one high heat? Yeah, so the induction here goes up to nine is the hottest. Yeah. And then we're going to start on an eight. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, on an eight, just so we melt it. Yeah, okay. Uh, and then I'm going to bring the temperature down okay. to about a six or a seven okay. while we're cooking. Um, it's so nice to have someone cooking because in this kitchen, because it's, it's always me doing the cooking. Is that right? I love. I, I love Dave cooks as well. You said. Oh, he does. Yeah, mm. scrambled eggs. It's fantastic. So it gets good it. use as well for breakfasts. Yeah. Right. <laughs> love you, Dave. <laughs> All right. Fantastic. So we start seeing that's melting very quickly over here. Can you smell the coconut coming off? I love it. These are our curry leaves. Here's about probably 10 on this one here. Again, you can buy this at the Indian store. 10 leaves. 10 leaves, yeah. 10 curry leaves. 10 curry leaves, yeah. And that's going to go straight in there. And that's going to start need to sizzling. Nothing. nothing. Oh. That's going to start sizzling. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Oh, and the aromas God. are going to start coming off now, right? Mmm. Love it, love it. And then we're going to get it. our mustard seeds. And I'm going to put a teaspoon. A teaspoon of mustard seeds inside of the burning oil not burning but not know, burning the not hot burning. oil hot oil i've got it down to a seven yeah now the moment we know that we're ready for our shallots to go in is when those mustard seeds starts popping oh so like a popcorn start, like popcorn start hearing some things pop so then the next one after the curry leaves and the the mustard seeds go the shallots then the shallots when, yeah. when they start but make sure that the, the mustard seeds are popping exactly we want to get them hot enough yeah and by popping then we know that they're releasing the aromatics we want to <laughs> yeah. get the aromatics inside in and we're not using too many because it's quite strong you know mustard yeah. seed flavor is quite strong Pop, pop in at our shallots. Okay, pop the shallots in. Now shallots, are, shallots, as you know, are pretty delicate. So we don't want them to burn. Give them a good stir so they're well coated. Yeah. Then once do, we've got them well coated. Do you want me a job? I can help with anything. What do you want me to do? Just sure help thing. me, please, sure okay? Sure thing. You can then keep stirring those. Okay, I'll stir come that. come around over here. Oh my. Move these out of the way. Oh, this is so... Oh my gosh, it so smells so good. Now we're going to put the temperature down, put it down to a five, so about halfway. We want those shallots to cook down a little bit. We don't want to caramelize, we don't want to burn. So we're going to put a lid on. So if you just put oh, a lid on that. Now lid. And then what it'll do is just capture the steam. Yeah. Uh, the steam will then allow the onions to soften or the shallots to soften, yeah. soften without burning. Yeah. So we're going to leave that in there for about two to three minutes. The next thing that's going to go in is our ginger and, and garlic, garlic mashed, paste. Yeah, paste. So I'd say two, two cloves of garlic, equal and amount the of ginger. Two, the same amount of ginger, yeah. You can smell those, there was a mm -hmm. uh, cooking down nicely mm -hmm. now. Yeah. That's a good two minutes. So it's about done. The dark we're now ready for... Ginger and garlic. Just ginger and garlic. And that's yeah. just going to add another layer. Or the aromas are going to come off. It's yeah. going to be... Uh, yeah, the temperature still Still keep it five. Keep it low. low. Keep it low. low. Yeah. And that's one of the things, you know, with, especially with Indian cooking, I'm sure a lot of viewers will know this as well. Yeah, it's about layers. You. It's not about putting everything at once. Together, yeah. It's about getting the aromas out Slowly. layer by layer. Yeah. So the finished dish is then a, a real journey through each of those yeah. different flavors. Yeah. I find that the sweet corn element is, it's a subtle flavor. It's not yeah. overpowering. Yeah. You know, so I've got no chilies in the sweet corn. Yeah. They're more aromatics. And then the boldness is gonna come from the chicken. I think we're ready for our sweet corn now. 350 grams of sweet corn, corn. crush. Mm -hmm. Now we've incorporated all of those aromatics in there. We go in our <coughs> dry masala. So our dry masala is gonna be three elements. First element is going to be our coriander and cumin powder. Yeah. So this is all this is, is whole coriander seeds, mm -hmm. whole cumin seeds. Blend it together. Blend it together. But yeah. you can buy this already made up, so you haven't got to make this yourself. So you can buy in the Indian shop. Indian shop, coriander cumin powder. Two teaspoons. Two teaspoons. Yep, I'll boil them here with salt. Now I'm going to start off with a heaped teaspoon of salt, but we're going to try it later to see if to we need to add any is, more. Yeah. And then we have a bit of turmeric powder. I tend to use a small amount, so that for me is like a quarter of a teaspoon. A quarter of a teaspoon. And that's about it, no okay. more. And then we incorporate all of this. Very good. Right. It smells amazing. Now, once we've got those dry spices cooking through, normally I would leave those dry spices to cook in that mixture for about three to four minutes. This is nicely cooked now. 
The next thing? Coconut. Oh, uh, coconut milk. Lovely coconut, coconut milk. milk. How much coconut milk? 400 can? milliliters. 400 milliliters, It's like yeah. a can. Now, what I would say is when you buy coconut milk, look at the back for the ingredients. Yeah. Because you often find that coconut milk is maybe 40% coconut and a whole lot of other stuff in there. Yeah. I buy from the Indian shop as well, the coconut frozen. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God, that looks amazing. We're just going to leave that to cook on a low heat. Just leave the lid on top. Right, um, ready to cook some chicken? Yeah, let's cook some chicken. First <laughs> things first, we need to get our oven on. 180 degrees C. You don't normally cook Indian chicken the way that I'm going to cook it. This is a bit of an influence from one of the classes I went to. Mm -hmm. And I learned how to really cook a chicken to keep it nice and uh, cooked moist. on the outside, moist on the inside. So we're really looking for a moist breast of chicken. The so let's chicken. get our pan on. Pan on. And fairly hot again, I want it nice and hot. Mm -hmm. Two tablespoons of, of oil. Olive oil goes in the pan. Here we are. And nice hot heat until it starts smoking. You see that it's smoking. Hot smoking. So now smoking. we want to, I'm going to use my hands here. Yeah, use the hands. Easiest way. Oh, Laying the chicken beauty. breast in here. Oh, beauty. Oh, they smell. Oh, gosh, this good, is so I hope. delicious. They smell good. So Amazing we're just going to sear those. Mm. Now those are in there, I want to drop the temperature down. We don't want to like burn it. So beauty. drop it down to about a seven. Oh, it's like music for my ears. <laughs> we're going to sear them. Make sure each piece is getting a good amount of the oil. Sort of moving around a bit. Don't worry about playing with them, moving them around. They're pretty robust bits of chicken. They're not going to fall apart. Now we're going to add our butter. Yeah. How much you said? Uh, 50 grams. Now that's melted, I'm yeah. going to add in my uh, sprigs of thyme. Yeah, I don't need to peel that pan. No, just just like that. as it is. Uh, we're going to add in our ginger. Ginger, the little. Yeah. How much you said of ginger there? Um, over here it's about 20, 20 grams of ginger. And then we're going to add our curry leaves. I yeah. said about 10 to 12 curry leaves in here. Yeah. And our two, two chilies. Two chilies. Yeah. For flavour, guys, don't need to chop them. Just cut them in half, right? That's right. Cut them in half. And then. Easy to take it out afterwards. Exactly. Going to make a gravy with it. I will need you. 180. Um, put this bad boy in there. Pickle onions. Pickle onions. Red onion. About teaspoon of red wine vinegar, teaspoon of salt as well, and uh, we're gonna use some fresh coriander. And we're gonna use a whole, all the stalks and everything, all yeah. this lovely yeah, flavor of the stalks. Yeah, I never thought they were gonna be, no, no, no. Oh. Right, so we're gonna cut this from top to bottom. Yeah. That's the best way to get our ringlets. Okay, I'm gonna leave that bit on the end, just to help us yeah, cutting help it. cut, yeah. And we just want some thin, Thin ringlets, so oh, it seems like about this size over here. While we've got that ready over here, I'm just going to take the chicken out and leave it to rest. Oh, beautiful! Look at this. Oh, smells so good. We're just going to leave that to rest now. Okay. Um, and then we're we'll going to chop our, our pickle onions. Yeah, so we'll chop our yeah. the fresh coriander. Chopping now. So we're going to chop the onions. Now chopping the coriander. Yeah. So all we need now to do is we'll take our measuring spoon, teaspoon of this, and teaspoon of this. Teaspoon of salt. And then I'm going to give it a squeeze of lemon, of lemon as well. Mm. And then we're just going to rub that in, work that in. Mm. Work the salt we'll in use here. Use the hands to mix it up, guys. Yeah, that always the hands. Mix everything together. Because you actually, when you're Mixing, you're squeezing it as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You can't get that with a spoon. Okay, take this coriander for this. Mm -hmm. And mix it a bit back again. There you go. Squeeze my hands. I wash my hands. Mm. Oh. Mm -mm. Mm. Oh. Look at the texture. It should be like that. That's the texture. You can see it's become like quite creamy. Yeah. 
that's the corn and the sweet corn, uh, sorry, the corn and the coconut milk mixing yeah. together. And all we want to do now is just uh, finish it with a bit of fresh ginger. That's okay. just going to lift the flavor. So in here, I've got about 10 grams of ginger. Chopped. Small piece, just chopped up. Finally chopped up. You can just throw that in there. Yep. If you want to mind mixing it up for me. Ah, uh, yes, my pleasure. Yes, chef. Thank you. And yes, I chef. do have a bit more coriander. Again, to bring a bit of freshness mm. to our flavours. I was going to say, the last thing to do is to taste it. <laughs> and make sure that we're happy with salt. <laughs> <laughs> so you want me to mix that for you? Yeah, mix it all in. You know. Yep. Mix it all together. Mm, and then once we've added our final ingredients, we're going to give it a taste. Oh, really? <laughs> we're going to add I our taste it. fresh coriander. We're going to resist it. Mm. And we're adding it at the end because we don't want to cook the coriander. We yeah, just, just, just want, want the it fresh. little freshness, isn't Keep it? Keep it a bit fresh. And I've got a yeah. bit of lemon over here. Yeah. And squeeze, squeeze it. Squeeze a bit of lemon. Oh, I'll David. The bomb. It's not good, it's divine. <laughs> it's not good, it's not good. So we're gonna take away all the addings, toppings mm -hmm. over here. Yeah. Um, simple way to carve this, we're gonna take the drumstick off. Yeah, Yeah. perfect, look at that, soft. And then we're gonna just take one side off over here. You're gonna, why are you taking the sides off over there? Because, I'm sure we've got a lovely cooked Chicken inside, beautiful and white. Mm -hmm. This is nice and soft and moist yep. inside, like that as well. Mm. There we are. Ooh la la! So, guys, now is the best time. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the best time is eating. <laughs> it is, of course it is. Oh my it's the best gosh. Part of the meal. I wish you guys could be here. You know what? I think I'm going to invite some viewers to come to taste, to have the experience with sure. us. Sure, that'd be what fun. What do you think? That'd, that'd be, be nice. Fun. Yeah, absolutely. I think I'm going to invite some of you to come and enjoy this with this smell here. It's divine. To so eat tell this. us again what we're eating tandoori masala supreme of chicken uh, with a crushed sweet corn and pickled onions. Mmm. 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 Thank you very much. Really thank you appreciate. for the opportunity. It's really been appreciate. amazing. Uh, thank you very much. Clap for my friend, guys! My best friend now! And then this is for us today, guys. Thank you very much for all, all you watching us. And, and um, thank you as well for coming. If you are, like some one of my friends, try to put someone and bring someone to the show, send us, send me email, send us an uh, email, or contact us on social media, send your restaurant, your favorite, send it to us. I want to hear their stories and I also want to eat that food. So I see you guys. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye. Thank you.